Hi, um, my name's Harriet. I'm here to talk to you a little bit about the language of sustainability. I'm here because I used to work for, I've worked for kind of quite a few marketing consultancies in my life. Um, you, a few of you might have heard of Futera. I've also worked for um, Ogilvy Earth in their kind of specialist sustainability communications section. Um, and I really want to talk to you about the evolution of language around sustainability um, and kind of make, well, offer up a, um, a method for uh, trying to kind of in capture um, the, the kind of the purpose of the um, kind of organisation or the brand that you're talking about. So, in the beginning there was marketing. And at the, at, at the time when, you know, kind of uh, when marketing first uh, kind of hit, first hit us. It was enough to say, enough to tell the, um, the people that you're, and your audience um, kind of what it was that was good about your product. You could say, our product is fantastic. You could say, Coca-Cola is great for health. You could say all of these things. And consumers would think, yes, yes, that sounds great. I will buy that. Um, and it was quite a nice cause and effect relationship. But as with all evolutions, um, people's <laughs> cynicism started to creep in. Um, and people started to think, hang on a minute. These, these things, these things that the marketers are telling us may not always be in our best interest and may not always be true. Um, and marketers are clever people, um, or some of them are anyway, and um, they worked out that, hang on, we need something new. We need a different way of relaying our message to our consumers. And then, then came public relations. Um, and the idea is actually we trust messages delivered to us by another human being, um, in this case a journalist, um, more than we trust uh, a message that just comes straight from a kind of corporate entity. Um, so, you know, uh, so the message, the messages started going out through public relations. If any of you have seen Mad Men, you'll see the episode where um, Don Draper writes a letter to the New York Times, and it gets it gets published, and it really causes waves. But as again, you know, with everything else, uh, people started to realise, hang on a minute. <laughs> Journalists aren't always kind of impartial and don't, again, always have our best interests at heart. So, um, so where do we go next? Um, and we've seen, obviously, those of you that use social media will have seen, well, actually, we, we now get a lot of the news, um, uh, news about products and brands from other people, our peers, because they've read about them, because they have an opinion about them, because there's content that's been shared about them. And this evolution is what we call branding. Now, um, I presume this is the woman that, um, you know, that he's attempting to, to seduce in this picture. And the idea with branding is that you actually know so much about the brand that, and you have formed an, that you have formed an opinion of it, that you have consumed so much content and you have seen proof that this brand represents something to you and therefore you will t tell others about it. Now, that's quite an evolution from a simple message uh, to a to kind of um, almost kind of trying to make this this uh, this kind of brand resonate with your values and to be something that you want to tell people about. So, in the you know, in, uh, with, uh, if we're talking about sustainability, how do we get to that point where someone says you know someone wants to take uh, wants to talk about this uh, this sustainable brand to uh, kind of to peers? And unfortunately, the way we've been going about it so far has been quite rational, has been quite cause and effect. Um, or, you know, we've, as, as Darren was saying earlier on, we've been trying to kind of shock people into action. Um, and that works for some of us. Um, a lot of us, you know, for a lot of us sitting in this room, we'll all have had an epiphany moment where we've seen something, or we've learned something that has really shocked us or made us want to act. Not everyone has those. If you are, you know, if, you're, if, if, if you are not predisposed to be green, um, then... Uh, not everyone has those. And to be honest, the green, this kind of green conversation has had, was really, really popular a few years ago. In 2006, Vogue published an article saying green is the new black. Anya Hindmarsh's I Am Not A Plastic Bag sold out. They were selling copies on eBay of it, of a five pound bag. And unfortunately, what's happened with a lot of the populace is that we've not really seen a lot of action and we've not seen a lot of leadership. And, what, and we've also been subjected um, oh, no, we're going to go back. Um, we've also had um, lots of information contamination from the media. We've got highly, um, kind of like highly connected, highly politicised media that's actually leading the agenda as well. And that's caused a large section of the population to, to, to reject green. 
And this is um, a survey that happened in 2012, and it was asking people, you know, kind of, who do you think is green? And they were saying people who have the money to be green, or they were saying it's kind of people, you know, kind of, it's hippies. So we've got a bit of a problem here. We've got a bit of a kind of, um, you know, kind of preconception that we need to overcome in our communications. And depressingly, when asked, you know, would you rather cure cancer or um, save the environment? We have a 70-30 split in favour of curing cancer. Now, that's completely understandable. Every, I'm sure everyone in this room will know someone who's suffered from cancer, will have an emotional story, will, you'd be able to, you know, it, it really it will stir something up in them. Um, and actually, what we can take from that um, with, with communications is, is an important thing, because um, sustainability has traditionally, or the environmental side of sustainability has traditionally been communicated with these, with, with these kind of big world things, with proffered saplings, with planets, with polar bears. And this is, this is wonderful. I mean, if you're, really, you know, if you're really into polar bear conservation, this is very, you know, this is, this is very pertinent. But if you actually, actually, what we know from human beings is we care for other human beings. So what started to happen with the visual language around sustainability, and you'll see this in this example here. I'd, if you want to go and look at the Rainforest Alliance uh, YouTube page, please do. They, have ama they tell amazing supply chain stories. They tell how if you, you, if you buy uh, Rainforest Alliance chocolate, you're actually going to be funding this, 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 this uh, kind of cocoa farmer in Africa, and they tell his story. Um, you can also see a very funny video called Follow the Frog. So we know that actually if we appeal to, hum to people's human, uh, people, uh, you know, kind of people's uh, empathy, we know that we can get our message across. Now, the second hopeful thing to take from all of this is we've suddenly got this influx of what the media patronisingly call millennials. Um, you see here the selfie and the moustache. I thought it was a great caricature. Um, and actually, th these people are about to be the largest workforce in history. And what unites these people, according to various studies from, uh, from people like Globescan, is that they actually, they actually want brands to do good and well. They, want, they have a sense of purpose. They're not prepared to go and do, do a job for a terrible company and just take the money. They're not prepared to buy a dirty product if they don't think that that brand is good. And you know, they, they want to be connected to people who share their values. So what does this all mean? How do we tie this together? Well, for those companies that have traditionally said, oh, sustainability, it's got nothing to do with profit. You know, kind of the purpose of a business is to make money. Well, actually, it's been turned on its head. Um, and we're seeing that people don't want to work for companies that are, um, that are not sustainable. We're seeing that people don't want to, uh, you know, don't want to buy products that uh, they know are harming, that are harming the earth. So you, what you see here is this kind of this gap. So you, on one hand, you've got um, people that are saying, well, I'm not green. You know, I'm not green. But on the other hand, you've got people that want brands to do good and well, that are hopeful for the future, and that want this world to be a better place. So I think what we've got here is we've got this gap between actually what people mean and what they, and what they associate with green. So, and I'm going to, um, I'm just going to, uh, direct your uh, eyes to this word purpose here. You will see if you start, if you if you if you look um, now in mainstream marketing, is um, our brands that are starting to campaign on this idea of purpose. Has anyone seen the um, the uh, always like a girl campaign? Yeah, we've got a few nods over here. It's beautiful. You have um you have a, a kind of um, a little girl and she steps up and they say, I'm sorry, I'd like you to run like a girl. And she, she considers it for a minute, and then she goes, she does this. And then they ask a little boy, and they say to him, I would like you to throw like a girl. And he kind of goes, and it's really quite pathetic. And then they turn it around, and they say, so, you know, do you, know, do you have any friends that are girls? And of, course they're, of course I do. So do you realise that you've just insulted them? And it's this whole advert, it's this beautiful advert um, kind of campaign around changing this idea, this ingrained sexism that comes from, um, you know, kind of considering things like a girl. Um, and where does this come from? Well, um, it comes from this idea that brands now need to, we need to have a shift between profit and purpose. So brands now are communicating around this idea of purpose and this idea of solving one of society's big knotty problems. 
Um, and I know this looks really, really simplistic. Um, these tools always are a way of making a lot of work look really, really simple. But what happens is brands are starting to look at what cultural tension, what societal problem can we solve? Why are we the best place people to do it? And how do we believe that this would make the world a better place? I promise I'm finishing. Um, and so, you know, the other example that I'd use would be, would be Dove. Everyone's seen the, the Dove Real Women campaigns. Um, there was a beautiful piece of, kind of um, content around kind of the sketches and asking women to draw you know, kind of what they thought they looked like and what they actually looked like. And this brand is actually going out there and trying to solve this idea of female self-esteem. So if we can do that, if we can do this, if we can find ways of communicating sustainability that don't necessarily overtly talk about sustainability because most people don't understand the term, if we can find a way that's, that makes our organisation serve society and solve a particular problem and do it in a way that talks in mainstream language, then we will get to the stage where people understand that we're great lovers. And we will be able to, to produce beautiful pieces of content that look like this and engage the heart, mind, body and soul. There we go. Thanks.